Previously on The Bill. You've been requested for a job. We want you to go undercover. Terry, this is a very important operation. If you have any doubts, you have a choice. You don't have to do this. Tell him I'll do it. Welcome to his end, Nick. We've got you listed here as a vulnerable. That's right, I'm going to be put on a Rule 45 wing. Right, you know the drill. Kid off, fold it up neatly and put it on the bench. I'm starving, is anything to eat? As soon as we'll finish the search and the paperwork. Mr. Marsh, if you do the honours. Yeah. I know you. Now, you must be mistaken, mate. It's D.C. Perkins. You helped my sister Angela when she was being stalked. What is this, a wind-up? Shut up, shut up. Problem? No. <laughs> You're breaking my arm! Keep still, for me. All right, all right, all right. Bring him up. What did prisoner thought pet you he for? He called me a filthy nonce. Oh, well, that's what you are. A convicted paedophile. Well, Thorpe, hardly what I'd call a good start. No, sir. Not it a bad? I'd rather not say, sir. If you'd send in prison officer Marsh. What went wrong? Marsh recognised me. I met him about a year ago. His sister was being stalked. I put the geezer away. Shut the door. Sorry about that, mate. I couldn't let you blow my cover. DC Perkins is here on an investigation. I realised that when Mr Hart called you Thorpe. Look, it's vital you keep this to yourself. Only three people know. You can't let any of your colleagues know. I won't say a word. Yeah, well, you better not. Otherwise, they'll be carrying me out of here in a box. What's happened with the vehicle left? I'm still waiting on forensics to get back to me, sir. Well, keep me up to date. Sir. Unless it's vital. Sorry, sir. Um, you know the prisoner you wanted me to check up on? Brian Thorpe. Thank you, now. In here. Um. A prison officer called Guy Marsh has recognised him. Terry was meant to check through the prisoners and the staff. Yes, but he wouldn't necessarily recognise the name. He dealt with Marsh's sister when she was being stalked. If this marsh is the present official we're after. Terry's in grave danger. Yeah. Let's get over to the informant. Three days confinement doesn't sound much. He's the type that cares. Well, that's now a good idea. We don't let cons get away with assault. Yeah, well, you make sure it looks real. Mr. Hart will see to that. <coughs> Can't let me die in peace. It's vital that we speak to you. There's been a development. I want Father Emery to stay. Your friend Charles Maudsley. Did he ever talk about a guy, Marsh? No. I never heard of Marsh. And in all the years you knew him, he never mentioned a guy. No, I can recall. I'm good on names. Take your time. Try and think. All I know is one of Morse's old paedophile rings a prison officer. He's looking after him on the inside. <coughs> Let me guess. Five days. Three. The governor's a joke. You're looking pleased with yourself, though. In you go. You touch me. I'm straight onto my brief. We love troublemakers here. 
Step up the line once more, and to say I'll have you is something of an understatement. Have you got that? Yes. You've got three days to think about it. Maudsley didn't give you any clue as to which prison officer he had in his pocket. You don't know what you're dealing with. Maudsley don't give anything away. All he said was, he and the prison officer lured the two boys to the caravan where they raped and killed them. <laughs> <coughs> I don't want to talk about it. I don't have to. I'm not under arrest. The only reason you're not being charged with serious sexual offences is because you won't live long enough to face a court. <sighs> Mostly might look and sound like the perfect English gent. He's 100% evil. What if he found out who DC Perkins was? He's a dead man. Now I know what climbing the walls means. Before we go out on the wing, if I can't mention this to any of my colleagues, that means you're after the member of staff. What do you think a prison officer is involved? The way you help my sister, I owe you. If there's any way I can help. Any of your colleagues start asking questions, you let me know. What's your cover? The real Brian Thorpe's a convicted paedophile, finishing a 15-year sentence in Morton Prison. He agreed to cooperate. And you've taken him out of the system? I got transferred here, using his identity and his prison record. That's an awful lot of trouble to go to, to nick a prison officer. This is a murder investigation. One of your Rule 45 prisoners, Charles Morsley. Oh, I might have known We suspect that nine years ago, Morsley lured two boys to a caravan where he raped and murdered them. Don't surprise me. That's why you've got to watch your back. A source tells us he still has the caravan the boys were killed in. I need to get close to him. I need to find out where that caravan is. Charles Maudsley, Matty Wilding. So what? I run this wing. Any problems with that? Look, mate, I don't want any grief. I'm out of here in three weeks, all right? Now, here on the grapevine, that you were liking for young boys. And? And I partake in the hobby, too. Pays to stick together. You stay out of my way, and I'll stay out of yours. And we'll get along fine. Let's wait and see. Always as bad, is it? Well, at least it was hot today. The cans in the kitchen like to send it over lukewarm. It was Perv's wing. Same as my old Nick. Ryan Thorpe. Thorpe. Roy Stafford. He fancies himself, doesn't he? Stay clear, it's out there. Thorpe, you start work at 1300 hours. Report to the office, you're on cleaning duty. You too, Wilding. The rest of you report to the laundry. I can see he's going to be handful. Hart leaves us to it. Unofficially, Maudsley and his mob are on the wing. But the one to watch out for is Wilding. He settles scores with a plague. Thanks for the nod. You all right? Hop, hop, hop. Thorpe. Good to meet you. Well, you do me a favour, will you? You want to watch it, Thorpe. You'll get a good kick in. We had one of those in our last nick. He had Velcro trainers because he couldn't tie his laces. 
The lovely Dobber saw a kid playing with a frisbee, <laughs> so he caved his head. That's an insult, putting us in with the psychos. Well, at least we know how to show a kid a good time. There have been no problems since prison officer Marsh recognised him. How long has Marsh worked on the Rule 45 wing? Oh, about three months. He didn't ask for the post. I happen to think he was suitable. Well, he checks out. Um, has there been any rumour of any sort? Only that he's a happily married family man. Now, as trainee psychotherapist, you know what's involved? Well, I work in CSU, and I have experience in counselling, which is why D.C. Perkins got me for the job. Ah, to be frank now. You know what to say? Yes. Come in. Frank Kerbishley, Assistant Governor. This is Mrs. Ease, our new trainee psychotherapist. Welcome on board. I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, we often get students and help out. Shame it's not more than one day a week. Uh, now, before we go on the wing, uh, try not to give away any personal details. S such as? Well, family name, where you live, attend college. I mean, you're dealing with clever, manipulative people. If you've got anything on you, they won't hesitate to use it. So you've done Bird in Walton? Well, you must be living up north then. That's right. Well, I've met the occasional scouser inside. Who's the top boy in the wing? What is this? You asked me where I did my time, what boozer I use, where I was on remand. I'm just making conversation. I'll tell you what, just in case it's too hard for you to remember, I'll go and tell him myself. OK, cut the crap. What is it you want to know? I don't like the way you just spoke to me. You tell your boy to back off or someone's going to get out. All right, Matty. No need for unpleasantness. I did eight of a 15 stretch at Walton Prison. Sexual abuse of young boys. Mm, that's quite a sentence. Sounds serious. We know what judges are like. Betrayal of trust. I was in charge of an under-12 football team. <laughs> and you did most of the scoring. Is there anything else you want to know while I'm here? Yes, why do they send you to this, Nick? This isn't just a place for long-termers, you know. It's also a Nick for cons about to be released. Well, we were just making sure you're one of us. You seem to do all right for yourself. <clears throat> you want a treat? Transcript of my trial. The victim statements make very interesting reading. Got a couple of loggers to go this way. No. But uh, should you want a gram of skunk or magazines of a particular nature, let me know. I might take you up on that. Excuse me. First year was okay. I did all right in my exams. Are you looking to specialise in? Um, not entirely sure, but um, the prospect of working with sex offenders does appeal. Thank you. Oh. Psychologically, it can take its toll. Oh, I'm sure. Well, I do love a challenge. Well, over the years, I mean, as paedophiles, the nature of their offence means that they're secretive and skilled at being deceptive. Adept at being able to tell counsel is exactly what they want to hear. And knowing that a high proportion will reoffend can uh, lead to disillusionment. Oh, gosh. Looks a bit intimidating. <laughs> it's not as grim as it looks. Take a wander about. I respect you more if you introduce yourself. Right. I've got a load more in me cell. I've even got an Apollo 11 rocket. Why don't I come and see it later? No, no, I'll, I'll go and get it. Hiya. I'll be helping out Mr. Kerbishley for the next couple of days. Have you heard about Marsh? I checked, but there's no link to Maudsley. Worsley cell, it's five star. He doesn't work. He's offered me skunk and child porn. Have you any idea who the prison officer is? Hart. He runs the wing. Check him out. I'll be here for the next few weeks if you want to chat. You think Terry's sticking his neck out? I think it looks like that, yeah. I mean, it's a big result. 
you know. Maudsley's serving a, a sentence for sexual assaults. He's due to be released in, what, eight weeks? And Terry knows that this could be the last chance that he has of nailing him for the murder of the two boys. If Maudsley gets out and destroys that caravan, he and the prison officer get away with a double murder. Do we know that this caravan really exists? I mean, I know we have Clark's word for it. Clark was right about everything else, including all the boys he abused. Why would you hang on to that caravan for all those years? Clark reckons that it's birthed on a site under an assumed name. Maudsley knows we'd never find it. Yeah, but would you hang on to it, knowing that it contained forensics that could put you away for life? I might. If my accomplice was a prison officer, I could use it to keep him in my pocket. I, I, I still think that we should get Terry out of there. You should have seen the look that Wilding gave Terry is an experienced officer. We need to trust he knows what he's doing. Thorpe, if you're messing me again, I'm gonna catch you. Get off him! Get off him! What's going on? We're just messing about, that's all. That's all right. We're playing. On your way. You come back any time. Using your fists again, Thorpe. He was pushing me around. I had to react like a con. He looked more serious than that to me. I was in Maudsley's cell earlier. Where's he getting all these little luxuries from? I don't know. And as for your boss, Hart, how comes he keeps turning a blind eye? Hart's as straight as a die. Anyway, his troopers are in the wing. His the officers take care of the cells. I'm here to help. If you've got a problem... I'm fine. On your way. That's uh, forensic results. Black's prints were found at the truck depot under Warehouse. Proves it was an inside job. His sister Maggie's working at the depot. Well, Black's local, and he has convictions for armed robbery. Yeah, they've nicked two transits, a pickup and a mechanical digger. He's got to be planning an armed Black. Is the sister still missing? Maggie wouldn't give us anything even if we found her. Besides, I don't want to let Black know we're onto him. Let's wait and catch him in the act. We can't wait too long. We need to prevent this robbery from happening. Sir. Sir, Clark's priest called there's a problem. Come in. What part of the country you come from then? Uh, originally Essex, but I moved to London, Canley. Yeah, that's my old stomping ground. You might know some of my old mates. No, I wasn't there long. I've been staying with a girlfriend. He don't look too happy, does he? <laughs> How would you miss a shot like that? Whoa. <laughs> Want another game? Nah, I can't. I've got to get ready. Oh, what's happening? I'm due in court in the morning, appeal hearing. You confident? Yeah, of course I am. I didn't do anything, did I? <laughs> We're fine now. Good. Okay, finished anyway. You mind if I hang on to your transcript? I thought you'd find it enjoyable. What about a sweet number running a boy's home? I look forward to going to work each day. <laughs> anyway, enjoy the game. Boss. I need an ounce of snout and I need it quick. Oh, then Henry went round to check out my flat. There was three messages on the answering machine from Maudsley. What did he want? I was due to visit yesterday, first Monday of the month. Did he want to know where you were? First time I've missed in years. Apparently, he didn't sound too happy about it. Excuse us a moment. It's too late to phone now. Mm -hmm. We'll get Clark to leave a message at the Nick in the morning. Meanwhile, Maudsley's going to get suspicious. 
Blood dead man, come on. What do you mean, copper? What is this? It was your rolling that gave you away. Show him a prison roll up. Pencil lead thin. Take his feet. No, no, no. Under the mattress. Take under the mattress. I've been putting a stash away. I've been doing it for weeks. Everyone's got a stash. I'm getting out in a couple of weeks. I was treating myself to a decent smoke. Okay, take it off. What's going on? We were just messing about, that's all. We didn't get off to a very good start, Thorpe. But we're trying to help you here. Yeah, but there's nothing to help with. Get back to your cell. And that goes for you three. Get back to your cells. Don't try anything like that again. There's nothing personal. This is a dodgy roll-up. I trust you now. If there's any way in which I can make amends, let's just forget about it, okay? You all right? I'm just a bit shaken. And I nearly hung you. It was a test. I think Mosley believes me now. You've got to call this off. No, no, no. I can handle this. I'll be fine. I've got to have a word with the governor. No, 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 no. Listen. I need to put Mosley away. It's not worth getting killed for. You don't understand that this is personal. You knew the boys that were killed? There's a bit more to it than that. So, Jazz? Look, let's just leave it there, shall we? No. No, for me to keep quiet. Look, like I said, this is personal. Look, you deal with paedophiles all the time. It's part of your job. What is this, some kind of revenge mission? Something like that. If you didn't know those boys, then who is the revenge for? <laughs> it's you, isn't it? I can do this. I can handle this, you know why? You know why? Because I'm gonna get mortally for murder. What do you think? Yeah, very good. You might as well go for lunch. Hey, thought we mm. we'd be able to play battleships. We had a game this morning, Dobbo. I'll clean your cell and make all your teas. Go on then. But I want the grid drawn properly this time with a ruler. That's all we. Well, it all went well in court. Just waiting on the appeal judge's decision there. Eh? Brief confident, is he? Yeah, confident enough, yeah. Yeah, those three are at it again, look. Yeah, I'll be glad when I get out of here. You never know what those three are up to. I'll see you later. See you. Smallest wreath possible. I want to spend as little as I can. The uh, deceased is Joseph Clark. Uh, any message? Condolences, Charles Maudsley. That's your game, Paul. No, thanks. I'm in the middle of a good read. What happened? Someone died? An old acquaintance. J7. No. But very near. Try again. J... Eight. 
Yep, he sunk one of our battle cruisers. Yes! I'm dead good at this and I thought. Right, put them away now, Dobbo, and have a group session. Go on, we'll finish it before lock up. Chairs. How are we, Mr. Falk? Clark's dead. Marsh is on the level. I saw Hart heading over some blow. Hart's background. It doesn't link up with Maudsley. I need to get Maudsley to trust me completely. Hart, come over. Right. Who's, uh, who's going to start us off? Ah, Matty. What? It was me last week, wasn't it? Uh, what about, uh... What about Thorpe? Uh, well, uh, I've got much to say, really. Well, you have to be released soon. How are you feeling about it? Um, well, <clears throat> it's the first time I'm going out knowing I'm not going to re-offend. What's different? Well, by now I'll be scheming. Think out my ideas of how to get close to, um... Close to young boys? Yep. You would plan meticulously. Yeah, <clears throat> it's like uh, being on a mission, you know. Um, often the abuse wouldn't begin for, for months. Well, could you give us an example? Um, years ago, I worked in a builder's yard. I found out this, uh, this bloke had two young boys. He was a decent enough bloke, wasn't very popular. But I was a bit of a jack the lad, you know, so um, he wanted to hang out with me. Bought him a pint. Sat with him at break time. Wasn't long before he invited me around to the house. I made sure I got on with his wife too. You infiltrated the family? Well, they didn't see it coming. Did the odd job. Um, it's a perfect family friend, really. Anyway, after about six months, boys idolised me, especially the older boy. Called me uncle. Couldn't wait to show me the work he'd done at school. He was a sad little boy, really. Bit of a loner. Perfect victim. Now, how did the abuse begin? It was the dad's idea for me to babysit. Um, the, 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 the eldest boy, he'd um, pulled a muscle playing football. Started off with a massage. He didn't have a clue. He had no idea what was happening. And how did you feel about your victim? When he threatened to tell, I put a knife to his throat. I had him so terrified that he begged me to carry on so I wouldn't kill his brother. None of our registered sources have heard that Black's planning a robbery. Then let's find him, arrest him for the vehicle thefts. We're going to miss out on the bigger results, sir. We can't afford to take the risk and wait. Sir. I'm trying to find Romani. I need her on a job. She's helping me at the moment. Anything I should know about? No, that's nothing important. What's the latest on Terry? Oh, he phoned this morning. He's over the worst of the flu, but he reckons he'll be back in about another week. It's a bit of a nuisance, to be honest, sir. Having Romani and Terry away at the same time. I'm sure you'll manage. How long did the abuse go on for? Every week for 12 months. You were continually threatening the child? He come around to my flat. I told him I'm going to kill you now. Then I let him plead and persuade me he wouldn't tell anyone. How was the abuse discovered? His mum knew there was something wrong. 
poor kid was suicidal. You three that's funny! You any idea what that boy went through? The psychological scars he's left with? Don't take it out on me. All I'm saying is, we convince ourselves that the victims enjoy it, and I'm telling you, they don't. They don't enjoy it. And I think Thorpe deserves congratulations for being so honest. I'm out in a couple of days. Kirbyshly will put that little outburst on my record, mention it to my probation officer. Exactly. They won't think it necessary to keep such a close eye on me now. It's a shame you're leaving. You could have got on well. Oh, you mentioned some skunk. Oh, I just missed the last gram. But I'm expecting delivery Thursday. Oh, I'm out on Friday. We down for five as worth. I think it's reason to celebrate, don't you? Costa, Sunhill. I know you're aware of the investigation. How many more of you are there? It's just me and Terry. Listen, I... I noticed the way that you were looking at Terry during the counselling session. Is there some sort of a problem? I think you'd better ask him about that. You looked concerned about Terry. Terry did my family a big favour. All I'm saying is, it's time you got him out of here. Is he in danger? No, it's something he said. You know what Maudsley's capable of. If you owe him and you want to help. He didn't definitely admit it. But the little boy he described, who was abused, I reckon Terry was talking about himself. I just uh, wanted to say well done, Thorpey. Mortley hasn't just fallen for it, he's impressed. You know that family that you talked about? The victim? It, it, it just seemed a bit too personal. I used to watch like that in PPU all the time. Well, I deal with victims like that all the time in CSU, but I'd say you knew that little boy very well. What is this? Is that why you're sticking your neck out? If you can concentrate on the job, I've thought of a way to force Maudsley's hand. Now, we know Hart looks after Maudsley. We can use him to put the pressure on. You want us to arrest her? I asked Mosley for some skunk. He's got a delivery coming Thursday. So we catch Hart bringing it in and Mosley sees us nicking him. And if Hart is the accomplice, Mosley's going to worry about him keeping his mouth shut. Okay. No, it's not worth doing it. It's the other side of London, is it? Just hang on. Romani, I've been looking for you. I've just been helping the super. Anything interesting? No, just reviewing old cases and stuff. Can I have a word? Of you, St. Terry? Um, he's in bed with the flu, isn't he? D.I.'s fishing. Well, we won't have to keep it quiet for much longer. We think that the prison officer is called Hart, and Terry's managed to get quite close to Maudsley. It's a bit late. He's out day after tomorrow. But Terry's got a plan. I mean, it might be a long shot, but it could work. Yeah. Oi. You won't be the only one leaving here first thing in the morning. Well, of course, your conviction. Uh -huh. Good day, mate. This time tomorrow night, I'll be down a boozer enjoying a pint. Just give me the name of that brief. Yeah. I've got to make some calls, sort the digs out. You got somewhere to stay? Yeah, like I told you, Ivy, my girlfriend, lives in Sun Hill. I got sent down the other side of London. It didn't make her local papers. She doesn't know anything about it. So where does she think you are, then? In Scotland, with my dying sister. I'll turn up tomorrow, say the sister's passed away. She'll be none the wiser. See you later. You've heard the news. What's the word on the wing? He's a paedophile, all right. His brief got him up on a technicality. In other words, we'll soon be free to reoffend. Right. Dobbo! Do you want to play battleships? No, thanks, mate. Look, I don't need this stuff anymore. You can have it. For nothing? For keeps? Ah, oh, cheers, Thorpey. Come back and visit me if you like. 
I'll see what I can do, mate. That's what everyone says. No one ever does. That woman counselor looks like she could be a copper. Oi, stashing gear you shouldn't have. The training counselor, she's on the wing flashing a warrant card. On what grounds is this search taking place? I've had a report of drugs on the wing. Open the locker, Ray. <coughs> you look concerned. I'm not surprised. What's this? Oh. One of the uh, prisoners must have put it there. Ray Hart, I'm arresting you for intent to supply control drugs and child pornography. She's nicking him. The governor wants to see all your little luxuries more than a fight. Hold on a minute. Oi! The copper's guiding your gear. This is about more than the poxy high fire. There's something big if she's coming undercover. All I know is I'm out of here tomorrow. My friend Maud's leaving me too happy. I'm not seeing anything without a solicitor present. I might have a job for you. I'm not interested. You haven't heard what it is yet. And it would pay rather well. I'm not going to screw up my release. The job's on the outside. It's got something to do with heart, has it? You're not talking to Wilde in now, you know. Let's say I just don't see Hart keeping his mouth shut. What is it and how much? A thousand. The Georgia caravan. If you're offering a thousand, must be worth two. Two thousand. But I want it done tomorrow. I need to see the cash first. Remember the address in case I get nicked. It's the Traveller's Caravan site, Colwyn Bay. North Wales. Plot 15. It's a green caravan with a white stripe. Don't mess up. I want it completely torched. I need to see the cash first. I'll sort it. What's going on? Mr. Kirby said you know where the governor is. Well, he's gone home. It's his road for evening. We need to call some little CID. Before you do, I'd like an explanation. I'm Detective Constable Perkins. I'm working here undercover. You saw to do with D.S. Da Costa. I need you to get a message out for me. Did you know this was going on? Only because I've met D.C. Perkins before. Give the address of this caravan site to Sunny or CID. Well, I'll have to check this for the governor first. In the meantime, get him back on the wing. You made a mockery of my counselling sessions. <laughs> D.I. Manson. Hayes and Nick. Well, which prisoner wants to speak to me? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. What did he say it was about? Okay. Tell him I'm on my way. The cannabis and pornography you find belong to me. For the benefit of the tape, Mr. Hart is referring to exhibits RD1 and RD2. Please continue. I was smuggling them into the prison to be sold as contraband. Was this for any particular prisoner? Or? I admit they're mine. I have nothing else to say. How well do you know Charles Maudsley? He's on my wing. He's a con. And did you ever associate with Maudsley prior to his being sent to prison? Of course not. Can you remember? where you were in the July of 1995. 
What is this? We're investigating the rape and murder of two eight-year-old boys. Yes, saying I had something to do with it. Well, a reliable source informs us that Maudsley's accomplice was a prison officer. Maudsley pays me to bring this stuff in. I'm making a few extra quid, but I've got nothing to do with any kids or murders. The prisoner, Brian Thorpe, is an undercover police officer. He says you're looking after Maudsley. Because I was told to look after him. The order came from above. It's Naismith answering machine. Hello, this is DS De Costa. Terry's in danger. Get him off the wing immediately. We're nearly there. We still don't know that he's on to Terry. I'll be much happier when we've got him out of there. I've spoken to the governor. He's phoned DS De Costa. She's on her way over. I still haven't sorted out the money with Maudsley. Well, your super says you've got enough of the address. I'm to release you right away. Last. Can't wait to get out in the fresh air. Which way? I'll take you to the workshop. Save how to explain a perception. We left him in his office morning, you. Dobbo! Dobbo! Where's Thorpey Dobbo? I, I don't know! We need to find him. He's in danger. Tell us where he's. He's your friend. You remember how he played battleships with you? Go on, tell us. In the workshop. Marsh knows. He came to see me. Shut it and watch the door. You don't seriously think I'd have given you the right address, do you? <laughs> Stand back. Stand back. No! I don't think so, Mark. Oh, I don't mean. Eh? Eh? Break purposely. I'm arresting you for the attempt. Come on, Matty. Come on. Hey, you want that? Hey, you want me? Hey, give it up. It's over. You took your time, didn't you? <coughs> I'm not letting you blame me for this! Yeah, yeah, just get in the I'm car. I'm not to do with those boys, Jess. I'm not lunatic, Maudsley! Mind your head, Kirbishley. You! You're a dead man. Good to say congratulations are in order. I wouldn't like to go through that again, sir. I'll see you back at the neck. Oi! What's going on? I'll be inside working undercover. Terry solved a double murder, sir. And neither of you thought to mention it? I was told to keep it quiet. Here's me thinking you're on my team. You're on a job, sir. I've got to see an informant. Anyone we know? No. Someone I dealt with in my old neck. Neil, good to see you again. How old were you? I was nine. He abused me for 12 months. And like Maudsley, he took great delight in threatening to kill me. So 
it was a bit more than just a result, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like a drink now. Yeah. I always knew you'd go far. I always knew you'd end up inside. <laughs> now, is that any way to talk to your old Sarge, who puppy walks you through CID? Who also asked me to lose some evidence in my first week because I just nicked one of your mates. Yeah, well, I was really impressed when you didn't show initiative. You were going straight to the top. No one was going to have anything over you, were they? Don, you got 30 seconds. A pickup truck and two transit vans nicked off your patch recently. Hmm. I knew that would get your attention. The pickup truck, taken yesterday at Gatwick Airport. We're not talking a big result here, Neil. This one's going to be huge. Be up there with Brinks Matt. And you're just going to hand it to me on a plate, are you? Check him out. Trevor Little. Australia's most wanted. This one makes your career. Takes you straight to the top. There's one thing that you did teach me, Don. It's never ever trust you. <laughs> it's make your mind up time, Neil. Do you miss the result of a lifetime? Or do you do a deal with the devil? Next time on The Bill. The only way we will have more Asian and black officers is when more Asian and black people come forward to be recruited. Stop! Now you start telling me things. Why is this so important to you? It's called revenge. This is D.I. Kavanagh of the Australian Police. Hey, pleased to meet you.